The purpose of this video is to review over the necessary components needed for successful completing the color-coded periodic table assignment. But more importantly, this is going to be a valuable tool that will help you as you move forward in your chemistry class and the various topics that you cover. One of the key takeaways I want you to get from this assignment is that it's more important to be able to read the periodic table to pull out the information that's embedded in this table rather than memorizing the table. Memorizing the table will only take you so far in your success in chemistry. However, being able to read the table is going to be crucial in success in future endeavors in chemistry. Now these next several slides will cover the information that is required for your periodic table. Again, the purpose of this table is for you to be able to identify and pull out key information about the elements and the trends that are found on the table. It is not to memorize the table, but rather to be able to use the table. So let's uh, continue over what we're required to do on the table. First, we want you to fill out each box with the element uh, name, symbol, atomic weight, and atomic number. The periodic table that I'm giving you, the blank one, does have the names of the various uh, elements already included into each box. We're also going to label and we're going to color code uh, the elements so that we can recognize what is a solid, what is a liquid, what is gas, and what is man-made. Next, we're going to label and color code for metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. This is going to be extremely helpful when we start recognizing the various types of chemical bonds and when we start our nomenclature. We're going to label and color code for each of the groups on the periodic table. The alkali, the alkaline earth, the transitional, the boron family, carbon family, the nicogens, chalcogens, halogens, noble gases, the lanthanids, and the actinids. Now, do, I do realize that the uh, lanthanids right here, that that is misspelled, but we'll get that fixed. Additionally, we will describe the four pieces of information found in each box. We're going to include the trends on the periodic table. We're going to label the four boxes of the table, the S, P, D, and F uh, blocks. This is going to be helpful when we start looking at the electron configuration and again, putting elements together to make chemical compounds. We're going to number the 18 groups and the seven periods. We're going to include the ion charges for each group, and we're going to highlight that and let that really jump out at us as that is very important as we move forward for nomenclature and writing our formulas. Now, the most important thing is you've done all of this work. Make sure you make a key so that you understand what these colors mean. Otherwise, it's just a pretty looking table. But what we want it to do is we want it to be a usable document that um, will be valuable for you moving forward for our future assignments. Now here we have the blank periodic table that you will be working with. Notice that we have each of the element names already within the, um, the table. That will make it much easier for you. I do want you to take a moment and I want you to look at this area down here. Now in this area down here, not all of the boxes are present. More elements have been created than what is on here. I believe we're up to 118 now and you'll notice that this is uh, only going up to about 112. That's okay. We do not need these elements as that they are man-made and they will not be useful in our class. Additionally, uh, at various times, the elements have been renamed. Uh, when they are first discovered, they're based on their uh, chemical structure, and so you'll see these type of names. But then, uh, as the uh, chemical society gets together and they um, recognize various contributions of scientists, 
then the elements will be uh, renamed for that reason. And so here we have Rutherfordium, uh, Suborgium. Uh, these are named after uh, the various scientists. Uh, you can go in and you can fix your table accordingly, or you can leave your table as is. That will not affect our future uh, assignments. So let's get started. The first thing that I want you to do is I want you to get a, a marker or a highlighter and I want you to go through right here and I want you to color that area in. Now that's going to be crucial because this area right here is what separates our metals from our nonmetals, And so color that in. Next thing that we want you to do is we want you to come over here and we want you to label your groups. It'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And just put those numbers right up here uh, at the top of the column. Then we want you to, uh, to number our uh, periods. Now this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we just want you to put those out at that far left edge. So now we can tell a group number, we can tell a period number. If we were to look at it, we could tell that this element right here is in period two, group uh, 13. Now remember, any time along the way, you can pause the video to get caught up on our, our labeling and coding out our table. It's important that you uh, stay caught up and you complete one section before you move on to the next, as it will make things easier. Now we are going to be uh, coloring uh, each of these tables with um, three stripes. And I recommend that you use uh, colored pencils. While the gel pens uh, are fun to play with and to use, uh, they will smear. And they will cover up the names, uh, which will make it difficult for you to work with. Okay, now that we have already uh, colored this area right there in, uh, so that we can see that division between our metals and nonmetals, we have uh, numbered our groups and our periods. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to add our ion charges. Now this is very, very important. So I want you to have a, a black pen to write these charges, but I also want you to have a highlighter because we want to highlight this. We want it to jump out at you because we're going to be using these ion charges so much. Now, right above uh, our group one, right here, we're going to write a plus one. Right above uh, group two, we're going to write a plus two. Now, this area right here, we're going to, uh, all of these right there, we're going to box those off. And uh, you can see I uh, box those off right here. And we're going to write plus 1, comma, plus 2, comma, plus 3. We're going to explain the importance of that later on. We're going to then come over here, and this is going to be a plus 3. Right here, we're going to write plus or minus 4. Right here, we're going to have a negative 3, a negative 3. 2, negative 1, 0. Again, these are the ion charges. Make sure you have those written in and you have them highlighted. All right, next we are going to go into each one of our boxes. And we're going to write down the atomic number. And we're going to write down the uh, atomic mass. Now, our atomic number is going to be whole numbers. That's going to start off with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can look at the periodic table in uh, the classroom. Or you can look at the um, 
periodic table handouts uh, that I have available. Uh, you can go online, but I want you to go through and I want you to write each of the atomic numbers in the box. And I need it to be small and I would like it at the top corner and I would like that to be in red. The reason we want it in red is because that's how many of our periodic tables are color coded. And um, when you see the red, you will go, oh, that's the atomic number. Now, once you have done that, the next thing that we want you to do is down here at the bottom, we want you to write down the atomic mass. Uh, two decimal places should be fine. And you'll do the atomic mass for each of these boxes. And we want the atomic mass to be in black. So that your box would have the atomic numbers up here. Ours are going to be in red because that's um, the color that we have our tables in our classroom colored as. And then our masses... We'll be down here at the bottom. Again, go two decimal places, and those will be in black. Now, use the um, periodic table handouts that are available to you, or uh, use the periodic table that's in the classroom, and I want you to complete that before we move on any further. Again, go through the entire table, write the atomic numbers in red, and write the atomic masses in black, two decimal places. Now again, before we move on to our next component, we want to make sure that you've completed the previous slides, that you have numbered your uh, 18 groups, your seven periods, that you have put your um, ion charge above each of these components and that you've highlighted it so it jumps out at you, that you put in all of the um, atomic numbers in red and all of the masses that are in black. All right, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to write the element symbols. Now, when we write the element symbols, we are going to color code that as well. By looking at the color of the element symbol, we will be able to tell if the element is a solid, a liquid, uh, a gas, or man-made. You will notice that I uh, developed my key. Now that's going to be very important because without the key, we see a periodic table with a lot of different colors, but we don't know what the colors mean. And so I'm going to use blue, and we're going to do this with uh, pens, not colored pencils. Um, I'm going to use blue for my liquids, red for my gases, black for my solids, and I put green for man-made synthetic. You can use a different color if you have purple or a different color pen, that's fine. Uh, the reason I picked these colors is because the periodic tables in my classroom are using blue, red, and black for my uh, liquid, gas, and solid. The uh, man-made is actually the ones that look bubbled uh, in the classroom. So to help you do this component, uh, what we want you to do is to now go through and you want to color code out for your solid, liquid, and gas. Now this one right here and this one right here, bromine and uh, mercury, are, are, are liquids. And on my key, I have that as being blue. So instead of red, you want to do this in blue. Now these right here that you can see that are green, those are the gases. 
on my key I have those as red and again the reason I'm using those colors is because that's what the periodic table in my classroom is coded as and so as you use that table this year it will match up to your own color coded table you will notice all the ones in black are our solids and then right here all of these that are in that aqua color those are all our man-made or synthetic so you need to uh, pause the video at this point you need to make sure that you've colored in um, your uh, element symbols and you need to have those periods numbered you need to have those groups numbered you need to have the um, element uh, atomic number you need to have the mass written in they've got it here I would have it written down here at the bottom uh, and then now you need to have those symbols color-coded and written in and so you can tell what element um, group uh, it's in what number so I could look at iron and see that we're in period four and looks like we are in uh, group eight I can tell its atomic number is 26 I can tell its mass I can tell its uh, name is iron and I can tell its symbol is FE and that it is a solid additionally we have our um, charges so I can tell this group is plus one this is plus two and in this area right here we have a plus two comma plus three comma plus one now you'll also see that right here we have a box on the periodic table we're going to draw that box and uh, I just used um, oxygen here but you want to draw the box and you want to label the atomic number you want to uh, label uh, element symbol you want to label uh, element name and atomic weight now where you put this box I would recommend at the the top of the periodic table and your key that we talked about with the uh, solid liquid gas man-made you can put that at the bottom of the table you can put that on the back of your periodic table it doesn't matter to me what's important is that you know where that uh, that key is located now you'll also notice that I took our box and I broke it down into three sections and that's because each box on the periodic table will have three colors associated with it. The colors that we see in this area up here at the top is going to represent whether we have a metal, a non-metal, or a metalloid. The colors that we have in this area right here is going to represent the group's name. The colors that we have right here is going to represent the block on the table so that when your periodic table is complete you're going to notice that it has multiple colors associated with each box you can see uh, three colors per box a little bit bigger so you can see those colors here you can see the red for the atomic number you can see the black for the mass you can see the symbol that this one is a solid um, but what we're going to do next is we're going to go through and we're going to identify what each color what each section on the box should be colored we are going to start off with our metals non-metals and metalloids so as we do this again we're not coloring the entire box in we're only coloring in this top section okay you'll have two other strips that are not colored in now on this particular one our non-metals are blue our metals are uh, red and our metalloids are yellow you can use that as your key or you can do any other color you want what is important is that you somewhere on your table write down what the colors stand for 
and you had the box on the periodic table that showed that whatever this color in this top area is, is going to be for our metal, non-metal, metalloid. So pause the video and get those colored in. Again, do not color in the entire box. Only color in this first section. There will be two additional sections that are not colored in. After you have completed coloring in for metal, non-metal, and metalloid, we are going to color in for our blocks. Now again, remember that each box is divided into three sections. We colored the top one in with metal, non-metal, metalloid. We're going to leave the middle one blank for now, and then we're going to come over here, and on this bottom section, we're going to color in for our blocks. And you can see that we have our S block, our P block, our D block, and our F block. You can use the colors that are already on here, or you can do your own colors. Again, it's important that you make a key so that you know that the S block is whatever color you use. The D block is whatever color you use. Now, a common question is, can I use the same color right here and the same color right there? Say I used red here. Can I use red here? Absolutely, because we know that when we look in this section, the red is going to be a sol uh, a metal, non-metal, or metalloid. When we look in this one, we'll see is the red representing an S block, a P block, a D block, or an F block. Now we are going to color code for our last uh, section on the box. Uh, this is going to be this middle section. And this middle section is going to represent our groups. Now you'll see how uh, the groups here are already colored in on the different colors. You can use these colors or you can use um, a different color. doesn't matter long, as long as you have your key. So our group one are our alkali um, metals. Our group two should be colored in for our alkaline earth metals. Group uh, three through twelve should be colored in for our transitional metals. I've had students ask before, well could I just leave that area blank and show that white is for the transitional? Absolutely. Again, it's your periodic table as long as you have it keyed out so that you can read it, we're good. Okay, you've got your uh, group 13 is the boron family. 14 is the carbon family. 15 are the nicogens. 16 are the chalcogens. 17 are the halogens. And 18 are the noble gases. So you need to uh, pause the video and get uh, your um, groups colored in and get your key made. Now, next we need to um, color in for our lanthanids and our actinids. Now, when we look at it, all the elements that would fit in this block right here are across here. Those are our lanthanids, and they have a very specific uh, type of property. And so we want to color in uh, our group area for these down here. We want to color that in to represent our lanthanids. And in that little uh, block right here, that middle part, we want to color in for our actinids because all of these elements here have properties that would put them right here on the periodic table. And as such, we have a drop down to represent that. So you have your lanthanids colored in for their uh, group. You have your actinids color in for their group. Now here's um, just a, uh, a picture showing you those charges that I asked you to write in. Uh, right here we would have the plus one, plus two, plus three. Uh, we talked about this earlier 
uh, in the video, but just as a reminder that you have those in and that you have these highlighted because it's so important moving forward in chemistry. Finally, we are going to include our uh, trends on the periodic table. This is so important in helping us move forward on making predictions of how elements and compounds will uh, react. So you want to get a ruler and uh, you want to get your colored pens and then you can see right here we have electron affinity. So as we move across the periodic table the electron affinity increases. As we move up the table it increases. So you want to draw that arrow this way, that arrow this way. You want to have it a certain color and you want to have it labeled for the electron affinity. We have the uh, nuclear charge. We have the ionization energy as we move across increases. As we move up this way, it also increases. We have the electronegativity. Um, we have the atomic radius. And uh, if you will pause the video, use your, uh, your pens and... Um, draw in and label these trends. I know you have an upcoming assignment. This is going to be critical to help you. So pause the video and get those trends drawn in. This right here is just uh, another view of the trends on the table. We just want to make sure that you have all those trends in. So anything that was not on the previous slide uh, that's a trend that's uh, on this slide, you can add in. Again, the importance of this table, yes, it should be an easy um, uh, test grade if you follow through with what I've asked you to do. But more importantly, this is going to be an invaluable tool helping you move forward and be successful in chemistry.